it's uh, 10.30. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, <clears throat> it's, um, it's great that today we have a lot of young people and people who are aspiring to do a lot of things um, around mobile money sitting in one room. Um, I think it's a dream for some of us who have been um, in the mobile money space for, for a while. Um, and I just want us to pay attention. We'll be able to get some very deep things within mobile money. Um, it's, I think it's a little wider than we think, we, than we think it is. I think there are a lot of things we can do around mobile money that might not be very obvious, okay? But there's a lot for each and every one of us to do within the space. Okay, so, um, so Vodafone Cash. Um, we, we, we started a few activities, so some people have seen some things going on around activations and and um, you know interactions with customers so we've not said anything yet um, but those of you who go to town quite often you might see some activity going on around Vodafone Cash. Now Vodafone Cash is simply um, in PESA brought to Ghana but with a different name okay because um, obviously for those of, those of you who know in PESA it sounds more like uh, in PESA you know, so yeah, so um, so we had to be a little careful about the name, um, and we thought Vodafone Cash would be a name that you know would mean something to people, um, and they would end up referring it um, to other things. So you might end up calling it something Vodafone's something. Okay. So yeah, so we went for Vodafone Cash. Um, we've been out for just about two weeks, or, yeah, two weeks, a little about two weeks. Um, and we think that we are seeing a lot of traction. We think the market is ready now. And there were a lot of mistakes that we made earlier on as telcos. Um, I'm speaking like this because I've worked in, in some of them. Okay, so there are mistakes that we made earlier on, some years back, around electronic payments, uh, no, around electronic airtime transfer, airtime transfer, those of you who know, um, you know, sharing of credit and all those things. And it wouldn't go, or SMS, the SMS would not deliver. So we have some trust issues we need to, to overcome. So it's our fault. Um, and that's why we are not seeing the kind of numbers that we want to see in Ghana. But we believe that this market would grow to become one of the best, uh, the biggest markets when it comes to mobile money. Okay. Um, okay. So, so Vodafone Cash, like I said, um, the world's biggest mobile money deployment um, in Kenya, Tanzania, in Mozambique, um, in DRC. Um, we're also present in Fiji, Romania, Albania, India. Same with the same name, Pesa, Egypt. So you just have um, Ghana and um, Egypt taking up the name Vodafone Cash. The rest are all in Pesa. <coughs> um, in Egypt, it meant something else, which is a little, I don't want to say it here. <laughs> okay. So, is there a need for this kind of a payment? Yes, there is a need. People are making payments using various means. Um, we still have the last time I checked, initially it was around 30% banned and 70% on banned. I think because of mobile money now and because of um, what, what MTN, Tigo, Airtel have been doing, we are beginning to see a shift. And so we are now beginning to see, yeah, the stats say somewhere around 36, 36% banned now and then 64% um, on banned. So yes, we are beginning to see a shift. It's a little slow. We think that there's a lot of work that can be done around it, but it's very, very relevant, okay? And we need to know where we can play as developers, where we can play as young people, young guys who are actually building companies and wanting to play within the space. There's a lot of payments happening, okay? And from 
um, from some research work that was done in Ghana somewhere in 2012, it says about 34% of payments go to family and friends. For whatever reason, we don't know. 31% for businesses. So people are actually paying family and friends more than they are paying businesses. So that's a lot of, it tells us there's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of, you know, work for us to do as young people who have our own businesses or want to set up businesses. 20% goes to bill payments. So every household bill pays maybe the electricity bill, water bill, um, and all those kind of bills. Um, school fees, sorry, school fees and, and whatnot. And then you have all these loan payments. So there's, you know, for every average household that ends maybe around 200 cities, this is how you kind of see where the payments goes. And so for every payment uh, deployment, you want to be looking at these areas. How do you satisfy, um, how do you satisfy family and friends? How do you satisfy businesses? How do you get products for bill payments and then loan payments as well? Yeah, we like taking loans. We have to take it because maybe the economy is not as, uh, as cool as we would expect it to be. So most of us would have to go for some funds, for school, for uh, to buy something or to even start a business. So yes, we take those things and we need to pay. So you see how well uh, microfinance institutions are flourishing. Although uh, at the end of the year, the interest rate gets to around 60%. But hey, we don't have a choice. We just have to take it. So these are the main areas that you know came out as reasons why people would use money. Now, so Vodafone Cash would attempt to address some of these issues. Now, I think that we would normally have a lot of issues with them, with our banking friends, okay? So the ones who wear the suit and tie. Did you invite them? You didn't invite anyone? They were here last month. Oh, they were here last month. Yeah, so we always, yeah, so we think we are bad people. But we are looking at the 64% that don't have access to the banking sector, okay? And it is very, very important that we get these people to keep money somewhere safe. Look, we always talk about flat and we always talk about fire. Everybody talks about 160 something people who died um, some months uh, just in June. Okay? We talk about the cars that were burnt, we talk about the property that was lost. Nobody talked about the amount of cash that got burnt. You have an idea? That was a filling station in the evening. All the sales, nobody talks about that. Okay? Flats, nobody talks about the cash. So, what? Our, our government goes around uh, getting some more cash at our own cost, whilst you could have a system that could just let you pick these monies. That's it under people's beds, that's it, um, what, I, I don't want to even say all the places that money sits, but obviously monies lie in places where you don't want them to be, okay, and they get destroyed all the time and nobody really cares, but this is a way for us to bring, for us to bring in a clever way the unbanked into the banking sector. So what do I do? I say, I get you to open an account, you get a wallet. You go to an agent, you give the agent some money, the agent gives you electronic cash. What happens? The physical cash actually ends up in the bank. So all we do is to hold the electronic version. We don't hold anything. The banks hold the physical cash. They make the money. Actually, they do. So until they start paying me any interest, they hold the physical cash. I hold the electronic cash. You know? So it's it's very important that we let them understand that we are not competing with them, but we are joining um, them in bringing the unbanked into the banking sector. That is, that is all mobile money is. So if somebody begins to say, you know, all sorts of stories, the person doesn't know what mobile money is. Um, I think last week there was, a, there was a documentary on BBC where um, a lot of the guests were talking about um, the fact that mobile money is still not making as much money to the telcos and all that. When you talk like that, you don't understand what mobile money is. Mobile money, the first reason why 
mobile money was brought into this world wasn't because the telcos wanted to make money. In Kenya, it was actually because they wanted to improve financial inclusion. So what do we want to do? We want to get these people to kind of have a way of saving. Actually, it was supposed to be a savings product, a small savings product, because we have issues with airtime. So airtime goes through, so it's good, I'm speaking to you. So you can start, begin to, begin to think. So I don't get a question, why don't you use airtime? Airtime goes through kind of a structure where people are um, incentivized or awarded with commissions. So it means when you pick up a card out there on the street, the value at which you, you bought the card, if you come back to us, we cannot give you that same value because it's going through a chain. So somebody earns something. So let's say a one CD scratch card. So we might sell it at um, 90 pesos. And then the, whole, the distributor might sell to a wholesaler at 92 pesos. And then the wholesaler sells to the retailer at maybe 95 pesos or 96 pesos. And then the retailer sells to you on the street at one city. So that's what you pay. By actual fact, if you come to us and you say you want your money back, we receive 90 pesos. And that is why you cannot use airtime for mobile money. That's why you cannot convert airtime to mobile money. Because it means as a customer, you'll be paying more for, for the value. Because I can only give you 90 pesos if I want to use scratch cards. Okay? So just this is just something to, to help us to understand why we're not going why we're not going mobile money. So it's very important that for everything that we do, we make sure that we are meeting the needs of the 64% who are on banks. As for the banks, they have so many options. They have internet banking, they have online bank, they have all sorts of banking, 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 although it doesn't really work the way we would expect it to work. Okay? So they have all those things. But we are looking at the off-bank. They are the main people we are looking at. All the others, all the new things, or the icing will be on the cake for those who are already banned. So we look at security. Obviously, if you want to convince this, this people um, to put their money, to keep their money with you, they need to be convinced that their money will be safe. We look at, <coughs> uh, there's an enhanced economic activity. So how do we improve what they do? What? Over 70% of the workforce is still within the informal sector. How do they keep their money? Is there a way for us to improve what they do around their monies, around the way they keep their money? Convenience. Convenience. Um, so Edmond spoke a lot about some um, stuff around convenience. If I want to make payments, do I need to go all the way to a point in order to make a payment, a very small payment. Um, I remember somewhere in <clears throat> somewhere in 2009, I, I was speaking to um, a parent teacher association, I think in uh, Wesley Girls, and I was telling them about mobile money and what mobile money can do for them. Apparently, there was a, one of the um, girls who lost her parents because they were coming over, they were driving from Accra to Central Region to give her, is it 50 CDs? 50 CDs. And they had an accident. So did I. Now, that's a very sad story. 50 CDs. Really? Very, very sad story. So this makes a lot of sense, okay? You can save time, you can do everything, you know, that you really want to do. Now, convenience, I think, is a big thing, especially if you look at our roads and all the stress we have to go through. I mean, we still don't have a lot of cars, but all our roads are jammed, you just don't understand. So convenience is a big thing. And you would, I, I mean, for you and me, one day just go to um, the DSTV point, um, I think what I do close around two o'clock. Just get there at one fifty or one fifty-eight. For those of you who pay, 
at 2 o'clock, you see people begging behind the gate. It's not their fault. They, were, they had to go for funerals. They had to go here. They had to do this. They had to do that. And then they get there at 2 o'clock, and the gate is locked. They cannot pay. And they know once they get home, there's trouble. Because the kids will be crying and, 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 and just jumping all over the place. So convenience is a big thing. And mobile money gives us the ability to give people a lot of convenience. So what do we want to do um, from a Vodafone cash point of view? I can easily carry whatever is in Kenya. And those of you who, some of you have read about Impesa, right? So I can carry whatever is in Kenya and bring to Ghana and put it there. Actually, it's the box. So it's the same box. It's everything that you have in Kenya sitting here in Accra. But do I want to enable everything? When you don't even trust that I can save your money or I can keep your money um, safely. You think that tomorrow when you wake up, it's possible that you won't find your money on your phone. Okay? So what do I want to do? I want to, I want to handle it in three broad faces. First of all, I want to have a create stage. Now, why, why haven't I come on radio or on TV to tell you that I'm doing mobile money or I'm here or whatever it is? I need to get an agent network, a very strong and a very good agent network. Because if you need to pay money and I have to travel, I, I need to send money or I need to get to an, um, a mobile money point and I have to pick a taxi or walk, what, 500 meters to go get a mobile money point, then I might as well tell you to go to the bank. Yeah. Okay? Once we are able to get to the point where mobile money is as close as getting your airtime, the airtime you buy, right? Then we know mobile money is really here. But as long as we still don't have those points very close to us, then it's just like the bank. It's just like the banks that we have now and the ATMs. So, yeah, so the very first stage, let us, let us acquire customers. And that's why we're doing a lot of below the line, speaking to people, getting them to understand it, getting them to know that, know that hey, it's real, it's not going to get vanished. You can buy your airtime, you can do whatever you want to do with it. And then also ensure that you aggressively build an agent network. Look, the network is the most important thing. If you don't have it, forget it. And so, the network also, so since I'm talking to people who are is it entrepreneurs? Uh -uh. The network doesn't only mean that it should be in a kiosk or a, some small dilapidated building somewhere. No. There's always the possibility of building your own network by managing them from a point. Okay? So all you just need is people, but once you have the systems to manage whatever is going to those people, then yes, you have, you have, you have your network. Vodafone Cash Grid, so, so obviously we'll be creating channels uh, to transfer money, leveraging on, on the reliable network, providing <laughs> benefits in the form of, yes, so um, like we're saying, the the regulator is now saying, look, you need to start paying interest. And so they've told the banks to now pay interest on the amounts that's set with them. And so we can pass it to the customer. So it, it just serves as a means by which you can even keep money away, keep money aside. The market woman who, who does her whatever, shopping or whatever it is, once she's, she's done, if she's made a profit of 50 CDs in a day, she knows that once she gets home, her husband is going to be demanding maybe 15 CDs or 20 CDs for some activity and some alcohol and whatever it is. The children will also get something else. And then by the time she realizes, 50 CDs is gone. Food and all that. If, she's, if she has a way of putting 10 CDs away and she takes 40 CDs home, yeah, you spend the 40 CDs, at least there's 10 CDs for a rainy day. So we just give them the opportunity to do some of these things. The second stage is for us to leverage on the network. Because look, 
In Kenya, right, everybody talks about M-Pesa, M-Pesa, M-Pesa. They have about 80,000 agents. In fact, that was the last time I checked. So I'm sure by now it's, it's past 100,000 agents. That is the beauty of it. Can you imagine if we had, that, that's what I'm saying, that if you have every point where you buy airtime, right? You know you don't, you don't think about airtime, or some of you, you do. The telcos have done it so well that those guys who sell airtime to you are so close to you, right? But do you realize the mobile money points are so far away from you? Mm -hmm. That is the problem. So until we get those mobile money points close to you, like we get those airtime vendors close to you, it will be very difficult. And that's what we need to do. So that's what he needs to do. That's what I need to do. That's what MTN needs to do. That's what he needs to do. So we need, to, we need to leverage on a strong network, and then we need to end partnerships. So it's all about partnerships. What are the things that you are thinking about? How can we, so there's a second stage. This is not a first stage, okay? So I'll be making a mistake if I'm telling you, okay, right now I need you to do ABC on my platform, da, 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 get people to do this. Uh, no, get the agent network, get people to trust what you are doing, and then you move to the second stage where you talk about partnerships. And like I said, it's all about partnerships. In some other countries, they have about 30,000 partners who provide various services. Look, it's money. With mobile money, anything you can do with money in your pocket, you should be able to do on your phone. It's all, it's money. So the second stage is where you actually look at that. And then the third stage is to enable um, total payment needs of your customers. So you go to a restaurant, one of the options is to pay using mobile money. You sit in a taxi, I left my wallet, what are the payments? I mean, when we get to a point where you can leave your wallet at home and you only carry your phone and you are very comfortable in town, then we know you're all right. Yes. So we are not there. Okay? So we are not there. So obviously it means that we need some of you, okay, to, to get us to make payments in our everyday lives. And we need to look at what we do. You know, sometimes we just import some of the things that we do and we say uh, it should work because it's been done here and here. You need to look at the Ghanaian. How does the Ghanaian use money? Where do they use money? What do they use money for? How do they treat money? Today, today, today is Friday. Look, today is Friday. Some Ghanaians in this country will go to the bank, change their old notes to new notes because they are going to spend it over the weekend. Today, people will do that today, okay? So, it means that you need to look at what your people do. So for such a person, he feels it's cool to have that money in his wallet. Because once he picks out the wallet, socially, he's seen as a very big guy. He has a big wallet. He's rich. He's. So, why, so how do you get that same person to have that cool feeling when the person takes the phone out and the person does a payment with it. That's a big question, okay? So, like, I, like I'm saying, we need to get to a point where once I get out of my house and I realize I've left my wallet, I don't drive back home. I say, okay, for my lunch, I can pay. Uh, for fuel, I can pay. For whatever, I don't know what you use money for. But for everything I use money for, I'm very comfortable using my mobile phone. So that's the that's that's where we know that we've arrived. And that's where obviously the likes of Impesa are, the likes of Kenya are. They've gotten to that point. Although even for them, what? They still think that they are just scratching the surface of cash. Cash is still king. So I'm not competing with uh, Edmund. I'm not competing with um, Tigo, I'm not competing with MTN. I'm competing with cash. That's my biggest enemy, or that's my biggest problem. Okay? And I'm trying to get people to be financial, financially included. So, just to summarize, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> Don't worry, I can talk for like two hours. So um, I think there's a lot of gains and there are a lot of opportunities. Like I said, for other, other places, there are what thousands of partners. There are thousands of people who do things around mobile money because it is cash. And as much as you want to do things around physical cash, you also have that same possibility to do it around mobile money. Okay? So it gives us all kind of, I don't know, the sky is even not the limit. Because, like I said, I'm competing with cash. So once I convert everybody on mobile money, which I don't think it will happen in my lifetime, everybody, including those who are not sitting here in Accra and East Legon, but those in Mempase, Manguase, once we are able to convert all of them, then we know that we're actually there. So there's opportunity for everybody. What industry? Um, the, 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 the banking industry, the financial industry, those of you who are working on financial tools. There are so many important things, like I spoke about, the agent network. Look, it's not just about putting an agent here. It's about knowing how much the person will make. Because if the person doesn't make money, and the person compares what he's getting with selling bread or selling cocoa, and he thinks that I'm making more money from selling bread and selling cocoa, obviously I'll, I'll pack my tools and I'll leave. So we need tools that tell us that I put cow here and cow will make money. Or I put cow here, I need to add Eben as well. Or I need to add Nana. Okay? Because I have a lot of customers. So there are all these tools that we need. I think at this point, all we do is the, um, yeah, let's just dump the person here. Let's just dump the person there. But you need a lot of tools, predictive tools. You need a lot of tools that will tell you these are the number of people within this area and these are the number of agents who will be able to serve them and this is the amount of money that the agent will put into them. So there are all these tools that we need. Obviously, we are not there yet. And for those of you who, who develop staff, who work on staff and, and you know write all these programs, I think you would also want to be looking at the whole supply chain of it. It's not just the payment side of it. That's the easy part. Okay, so everybody says, why does it work in Kenya and it doesn't work in any other place? They had a different topology. They are, they are, they are different. The people are different. They, I mean, so many things happen. Civil, elect, um, 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 electoral, what? Violence and all that. Because when we look at the figures, you see it. Before the electoral violence, the figures were not that high. Once people couldn't go out, People couldn't meet family and friends. People were hiding and all. They had to send money. What did they do? They fell on over money. I don't think we are waiting to go into some <laughs> physical strife here. I don't think that's what we want. But I think that we can actually work on tools, use tools. We can use analytic tools to actually drive this kind of behavior. I think that's, the, that's what I would want. And that's what I would want to see um, for Ghana. Thank you very much.